Great news for all Social Security beneficiaries and SSI, SSDI, SSA seniors. Good day, everyone, and thanks for tuning in to another episode about the latest news on Social Security. As always, I'm here to break down the important updates coming out of Congress that could really help beneficiaries across the country. If you find this information helpful, be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future reports. And don't forget to hit that like button and leave a comment below to let me know your thoughts on the proposed changes. All right, let's dive back into what legislators are working on. As I mentioned last time, they've introduced bills to raise asset limits for SSDI recipients and provide protections for young disabled workers. Stay tuned because things are progressing and votes could happen soon. As many of you know, the Social Security system is a vital program that provides retirement benefits and disability insurance for over 65 million people. However, there have been ongoing issues around restrictions that prevent some beneficiaries from working while still receiving their full benefits. Congress has recognized these problems and has been working to pass new legislation to help improve people's situations. One key area of focus has been increasing the asset and savings limits for Social Security disability recipients. Currently, the rules prohibit anyone on disability benefits from having more than $2,000 in savings, or they risk losing their eligibility entirely. However, many feel this limit is far too low and outdated. Congress understands that people should have more flexibility to save money and accumulate some assets without fear of jeopardizing their essential income support. To address this, legislators have introduced a bill that would significantly raise the limit on allowable savings for Social Security Disability Insurance, or SSDI, beneficiaries. By allowing recipients to have thousands more in savings and assets, this opens up new opportunities for them. It means people with disabilities now have more freedom to work part-time or start small businesses without being at risk of losing their monthly stipend from Social Security if their savings exceeds the current threshold. Providing this increased flexibility is an important step toward empowering people with disabilities and recognizing their ability and right to participate more fully in the workforce and society if they choose. No longer will a few thousand dollars in assets condemn someone to a life solely dependent on their disability check for any additional income or savings. In a similar vein, Congress is also working on protections for a specific group, individuals who developed their disabling condition before the age of 22. Right now, these young people often lose access to their disability benefits if they try to work. However, advocates argue it is unfair and counterproductive to deny income support to those trying to be productive members of the workforce, despite living with a disability from an early age. To address this, legislators introduced a bill that aims to waive the work restriction rules for this population. If passed, it would allow those with conditions present since childhood to maintain their SSDI benefits even when employed, giving them greater independence and opportunities. Like the asset limit increase, this proposed change seeks to empower people with disabilities rather than unnecessarily limit their options. In addition to helping current beneficiaries, Congress's actions could also assist those dealing with overpayment issues related to Social Security. Sometimes due to administrative errors, the program sends out higher payments than recipients are actually owed. While mistakes happen, demanding massive repayments all at once creates severe financial hardship, especially for those living on fixed incomes. To soften the blow, legislators announced a waiver process giving overpaid individuals the ability to apply for forgiveness of amounts exceeding their normal monthly benefit. This common sense step acknowledges that the government shares responsibility when errors occur and prevents penalizing people for matters outside of their control. It provides needed relief and protects the vulnerable. The changes being pursued by Congress aim to modernize outdated rules and remove unnecessary barriers currently facing Social Security beneficiaries. By raising limits, providing protections, and implementing waivers, legislators seek to balance program integrity with empowering people and recognizing their inherent dignity and potential. If passed, these proposed reforms would go a long way towards helping millions of Americans live with greater stability and opportunity. As you all know, I've been keeping a close eye on the progress of these important Social Security reform bills, and I'm excited to share that there have been some major developments since we last spoke. Just last week, both the Asset Limit Increase Bill and the Young Disabled Worker Protections Bill had hearings in their respective committees. 
advocates and beneficiaries testified about the real impact these kinds of restrictions have on people's lives. Their brave stories seemed to really resonate with legislators on both sides of the aisle. In the Asset Limit Bill's Ways and Means Committee hearing, Senator Sherrod Brown grilled administration officials on why the current $2,000 threshold is so unreasonably low still in 2022. He pointed out that it hasn't been raised in over 30 years, despite the skyrocketing cost of living. The officials struggled to justify keeping people in poverty over saving a few thousand in case of an emergency. It was great to see such strong support. In fact, after the hearings, both bills have been fast-tracked to the floor for full votes. This is huge progress and a sign that Congress recognizes these issues must be addressed. I'll be sure to let you know the outcome of those floor votes as soon as they happen. While the legislative process marches on, the Social Security Administration also recently announced its own administrative actions that will help in the short term. Due to overwhelming requests, the SSA is expanding its waiver program for overpayment repayments temporarily. Now, anyone who received overpayments not due to willful deception and has been making good faith repayments can apply to have the remaining balance waived. They estimate this will help close almost 200,000 long-standing overpayment cases providing financial relief worth hundreds of millions of dollars. Every little bit helps, so kudos to the SSA for recognizing the hardship this causes and acting quickly. Of course, a permanent legislative fix through Congress granting automatic waivers above a certain threshold would be even better. But this is certainly a step in the right direction to ease the burden. I want to thank all of you for your ongoing support and for spreading the word about these important issues. The advocacy of beneficiaries and allies is having a real impact. Whether it's sharing videos, contacting legislators, or testifying, your voices are helping move the needle in a big way. We've made tremendous progress so far, but the fight for Social Security reform is far from over. There are still many vulnerable groups who face unfair barriers within the current system. I want to take a moment to shine a light on a few other issues advocates are working hard to address. For example, the earned income limit for beneficiaries has not increased since 1990. This means anyone receiving SSDI or SSI can only earn up to $1,350 per month without risking benefits suspension. Can you believe that? With inflation, the real value of that amount has plummeted over 50% since then. No one can truly support themselves on such meager, allowable wages. Luckily, legislators like Senators Brown and Casey have introduced a new bill to raise the substantial gainful activity level to a more livable $3,000 per month. This would empower many more disabled individuals to rejoin the workforce if desired. It removes the disincentive to even try working part-time without fear of consequence. Another population that deserves attention 